What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're kicking off a series that gets in depth on teaching you how to create realistic renderings inside of Fusion 360. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this first video, I'm gonna give you kind of a high level overview. And then in the follow-up videos, we're gonna dive deep into things like lighting and materials and things like that. But first off, what we wanna do is we want to talk about what a rendering is and how to create one. And before I even do that, um, I've got a little bit of misalignment in this body right here. So I'm going to move it up. And so basically what I've got here is I've got like a very simple table model. And at the moment, um, I mean, while it does give a kind of a visual representation of what the table might look like, it doesn't look very good. So it doesn't have any materials applied to it, so it doesn't look very realistic. And the lighting isn't very good. Just overall, it's not a very good image. And so now we know that inside of Fusion 360, we can apply materials to objects by going into the modify panel and adding either a physical material, which is more something that has to do with the uh, properties of objects, or in this case, an appearance. And so an appearance is just going to make your object look more like something else. So if we go into appearance, what we can do is we can apply a material. And in this case, we're going to apply to the full body and component. We're gonna see what that does, but you can go down here and there should be a library of different options that Fusion 360 allows you to download. So in this case, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna pick um, one of these wood materials. So maybe we'll pick like one of these uh, 3D maples. And so we'll pick kind of the semi-gloss. You can pick any material that you want to. And what I wanna do is I just wanna click and drag it onto this object. Well, notice how when you click and drag a material onto an object, it now looks like that material. Um, so that material is basically being applied as a texture to this object right here. So already this looks a lot better, right? It doesn't look like it's made of metal um, because everything kind of defaults to steel in Fusion 360. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and let's add something different to our background just because that's something that's going to be in our rendering. Let's go ahead and let's pick kind of a glossy paint material. So we're gonna pick a white glossy paint, drag it onto this object right here. And we can actually leave the legs because they have that steel satin material applied to them in here. And so um, that's probably gonna render out just fine. But what we've done is we've now created a view of our object where um, you can see that it's made of a wood material with metal legs with a white background. But it doesn't look especially great right now because of the way that light is interacting with this object. Um, and so the reality is in real life, light reacts with objects in different ways, right? So it bounces off of different things. It creates reflections, things like that. Well, your typical three-dimensional view inside of a program like Fusion 360 isn't going to show any of that. And just real quick, we're not gonna mess around with the size of the material in this video. We will get into that in the future. We're just gonna consider this good for what we're doing. But in order to render out an object, what we need to do is we need to jump into a different mode in Fusion 360. And you can find it by clicking the drop down right here and going into render. And so when you jump over into render mode, you're immediately going to notice that this looks a little bit different, right? So there's kind of some shadows sitting in this view right now. And the light is interacting with things a little bit different. Like you can't see a ton of it right now, but you can see that this looks different um, than if you were to toggle back into design mode right here. So you can tell that this is doing some different things. Well, what we want to do is we want to make some quick adjustments in order to create a more realistic rendering. And so right now this is giving you kind of a preview view, but if you were to click on this button right here for in canvas render, notice what this is going to do is this is going to go through and it's going to create a rendering of your object just like this. And so when you work in rendering, there's really three things you need to worry about, probably less with Fusion 360, just because it's usually more of a product type software, but you need to worry about lighting, material, and composition. Or in this case, we're just gonna worry about lighting and materials. And so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna change the lighting setup in here. Actually, you know what? No, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna change the material. And so right now, this is a three-dimensional generated material, which maybe isn't necessarily what we want. So what I wanna do is I just want to go back into my materials and I'm gonna pick a different wood. So we're going to click and drag maybe this like cherry wood in here 
just like this. And so notice how when we click and drag the cherry in here, what that's doing is that's applied a wood texture material that's actually kind of reflective, right? You can actually see that in here. You can see that light is reflecting off of this. Now, one thing that we might want to do is we might want to change the direction that this material is facing. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to apply to faces. I'm going to duplicate my cherry material and I'm going to apply a different cherry material to the, the areas where my wood should be facing the other direction. And then I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to edit it and I'm going to set the rotation to 90 degrees right here. So now what I've got is I've got a wood material that's actually running in this direction along my object. And we could definitely come in here and adjust the size as well. So this is a little bit big. So I'm going to bring this cherry material down. We'll bring this scale down to maybe something like 30 right here. And we need to make sure we do this to both of these materials so that they're the same size like this. But now we've got this kind of cherry material. Well, the cool thing about this cherry material is if you look at it, it's actually reflective, right? It's reflecting light off of it in your scene, which makes it look a lot more realistic. So we can do the same thing with this metal right here. So if I edit this metal, notice how I can adjust how reflective the metal is by adjusting the roughness up and down. Roughness is basically a trait of an object that sets how much it reflects light in your scene. But now I think this is doing a pretty good job of giving us a fairly realistic material. And you can always jump over into your in canvas render just to do a render in your scene and see what it's going to look like. And I'm not necessarily a massive fan of the way that the lighting setup is working. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause this render. I'm actually going to turn it off and I'm going to go into my scene settings and I'm going to adjust my lighting. So right now, for example, I feel like the light is super bright and it's just not really giving me very interesting light, right? It's just kind of uniform and super bright in here. And so what I want to do is I want to jump into my environment library and I want to pick another light in here. So for example, I might want this light to face a little bit more down. So I might bring in this skylight environment. So I can click on that to download it. I can click and drag this into my scene. And when I do that, notice how the light in my scene is going to be different. Now, I don't necessarily like that either because this is like straight up and down, which is not necessarily what we want. So you can drag different environments out of your environment lighting in here and pay attention to what that's doing to your light and see if you like it. Um, but then you can also jump into your settings and you can do things like positioning or rotating that light. And so basically what that's this is doing is it's rotating that environment around in our scene um, around our object. And so the way that the light is being cast in here is going to be different depending on how you do that. I'm gonna go ahead and click on close right here. We can do another preview of our in canvas render to see what this rendering is going to look like when we actually apply the light to it. And so if we zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see what that rendered image is going to look like using that in canvas render right here. And so we can keep playing around with those settings, but in general, what we're doing is we're just kind of setting up our lighting um, until we get a look that we like, right? So I've got this in here and I think it's pretty close. Um, you could always come in here and make additional changes to your environment. So things like making your background brighter, right? You might bring this down to something like 500 and it might make your lighting a little bit more interesting. Um, but we can go ahead and click on close right here. I'm going to toggle this body back on and say I wanted to create my final render right here. And I'm maybe going to adjust this a little bit right here. But now I want to create my final render. Well, what you can do, but then once you've saved this, you can click on the render button in order to create a rendering in here. And you've got options in here to do this with the cloud render or the local renderer. So the cloud one is going to happen in the cloud. The local is gonna happen on your machine right here. Note that there's a standard render quality and the final render quality. The final render quality actually takes render tokens, I think is what they are. So you have to pay for those. Um, but if you wanna use the free version, I think you can just do the local render. You can do a standard and you can set things like your image size right here. And then you can click on the option for render. And so that's gonna work for a little while um, and create kind of your rendered image. But when it's done, you're gonna be able to see it down here in this render gallery 
right here. And when it's done, you can click on this in order to see your rendered image right here. And you can take that and you can download it to your computer. And if you open up that image, you can see what your render ended up looking like. And this is obviously just like a very fast rendering that we've created in here, but you can see how you can use this in order to create a more realistic view of your objects that are going to be built. So if you wanna see how something's gonna look in real life with materials, you can do that with rendering. All right, so that is a super fast, high level overview. In future videos, we're gonna go through and we're gonna talk more about the lighting settings, the material settings, things like that. But that should be enough to get you started. Go in there and play around with this a little bit and then we'll get more in depth in the next video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.